everyone. Today I'm going to tell you about and show you how to do needle felting. Um, it's a craft that uses wool. It's a uh, process but it's not in the form of a long strand or string. It's roving so it's been washed and dyed um, but it's sort of this just um, chunks of fibre rather than a long strand and by using these special needles that have barbs on them don't know if you can see they sort of have little barbs on them um, by repeatedly stabbing the roving the fibers sort of fuse together and that creates the felt and so then you can make all these um, cute little uh, things with it these are some things that I've made, little sheep on a hill, mushrooms, little bird. This one is actually from this book that I was given. It's called Wool Buddies and it's got some really cool ideas in it. Uh, I was given a pack or a needle felting set um, years ago. It was bought online. Heidi feathers and I got all these different colors um, but you can buy um, roving and also the um, special needle felting needles um, from craft shops specialty craft shops if you are an Armdale local you can get them at the Urala wool room I believe okay so I'm going to show you how to do it Okay, so I've got my foam mat here which is my working surface so that I'm not when I'm stabbing the wool or the roving I'm not stabbing into the table or my hands um, and here is what I'm going to start with I'm just going to start with some plain white um, roving and that's going to form the shape I'm going to make a strawberry because I've got lots of red and a bit of green and I think that'll be really cute now I've got my needle but they're really sharp and when you are needle felting you are doing this for a long 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 time and so um, I've got these sort of leather finger gloves like that. You hold your work with those and then while you're using your needle, sometimes you hit them, but as long as you're not doing it too hard, um, you won't hit your skin. Okay, so this is pretty fluffy. There's lots of air in it. We want it to be really firm and tight. Because, yeah, we want our strawberry to be sort of firm. And then we'll make it with white and then we'll wrap red around the edge, around the outside. And so we want to have something sort of firm to be able to attach the red roving to. And the leaves and um, maybe even some little seeds. So there's a couple of ways of doing this. Um, you can just sort of fold it, scrunch it in, and then um, start to poke the roving. Some people, um, if their roving has come in a big long strand, like mine actually did before I cut it, you could tie it into a knot like that, and then it's sort of already held a bit firm. Actually, that's a really good shape for my strawberry. I think I might do that. I use really sharp scissors. And if you've got any bits poking out, um, don't worry about them because we can always just um, prod them back in. It's a really forgiving craft. You can kind of make it up as you go. You can fix things as you go, take things off, put things on. Yeah, I think that's a great shape. So I'm going to start um, prodding this. I better put my... Um, finger gloves on and actually I should show you I've also got this wooden tool that just provides a bit more of a sturdy surface uh, or sturdy um, means of holding the needle not essential but kind of useful and this is all um, in the Heidi Feathers pack. And I think you can get packs like this on Etsy. Yep, 
this is just the beginning. So I'm just prodding it down so it's going to stay in place. Makes this fantastic crunchy noise. You know that the fibres are fusing together when you can hear that. What I, how I started my little owl um, a white base to make the shape and then just attaching colors on the top okay that's not finished yet it's still quite squishy that's just showing you how to start. I'm going to go off screen for a little while and just keep stabbing this until it's nice and firm. Okay, so I've just spent about another five minutes um, prodding and poking my little strawberry shape. And it's still a bit squishy, but I think it's firm enough to attach some red roving. Um, I really do recommend these leather finger gloves um, because I have made myself bleed several times. In fact, I've made myself bleed through these. I've actually pierced the leather and gone through to my skin. So that's, you probably want to take it slow if you don't have any protection. So now I'm going to attach some red roving to make um, my straw be nice and bright. I'll just wrap it around to see approximately how much I need. It doesn't matter if I cut off too much or too little. I'm just going to cut it there. Woohoo. Nope, that needle is not what I want. That's better. Yeah, you can see the dots where it's attaching. So what I'm going to do, instead of working on one spot for a while, I'm going to keep it a little bit loose because as you push it in, it sort of gathers and you'll see, you see how the shape really reduced. It's sort of the same with this, but I'm going to go around and just sort of tack it on. Not too, yeah, I'm, I'm leaving it kind of loose because I know it will bunch up as I poke it in. And if you have any excess, you can easily just trim it off. Oh, now, you can see there, it just got a bit thin. And the white's sort of poking through. That's fine. I can go back and I can even just rip tiny bits off and just attach them. But I'm not too worried about that right now because it's only the start. And I'm, I'm just tacking it on. And I'll go around and make it a lot neater in a minute. I'll do the top. And I'm going to put leaves on the top so I'm not super worried about the centre, but I've got plenty, so. And you don't want to twist it or sort of do any funny movements or twist this. You just want to go straight in and then out again. Straight in and straight out. Because um, you don't want to break your needle. I've done that before. Because they're quite thin, really. But very sharp. Because it's not actually the tip that's doing the work. The tip is what um, gets it through, and it's the barbs on the edge that are fusing those fibers together. Tangling them up, I guess. Hmm, it doesn't look as bright. Mm, I guess it is. 
Okay, so you sort of get the idea. It's loosely tacked on. I'm going to go off screen again and um, make it all nice and flat. Okay, here is my strawberry. I could keep going. I could keep squishing it down, but um, I'm happy with that. That's okay. It's kind of kind of bumpy, but strawberries are anyway. So now I'm ready to do my leaves. And actually, I'll, I'll show you something else that I've done, this little um, Christmas pudding. And the interesting thing about this guy is that um, this is actually attached to a polystyrene ball. So instead of doing a roving base or initial shape like I did with my strawberry, I just attached it to um, styrofoam like the ones you can buy at Spotlight for Christmas decorations. And it makes it a lot quicker, but obviously it's not as environmentally friendly. Um, but these are the kind of leaves that I will intend to do for my strawberry. Um, they're a little bit trickier because you have to make them flat on the foam board. Yeah, it's a little bit more complicated, so um, I'll show you how to do that. So I'm just working out how big I want the leaves to be and how many I want. don't know if I want sort of three leaves. One, two, three. Or how much I want them to overhang. I think I'll start with three. And I can always add another one if I want. Um, I probably actually haven't got enough wool there because it really does reduce because we're not just doing um, another layer, a thin layer, we're actually making sort of a standalone item. And I'm going to go without the gloves for this one because um, it's just really fiddly and they're a bit cumbersome. Um, so I'm going to be extra careful not to stab myself. I've just kind of folded it over flat. This will be the top part of the leaf. Yeah, I definitely didn't get enough roving out that time, but I'll just make two out of this, I think. Kind of stabbing it into the board. It's probably okay if I sort of leave that a bit loose and fluffy. Gives a nice effect. This is probably not the best needle for the job, but... Kind of becoming this flat shape. I'm not too worried about what this side looks like. I'll just sort of tuck it in a bit. And, and just remember not to pull and, and twist because you can break your needle. So just straighten straight out. And if you want to sort of move some roving, just do that before you poke it in. Hmm, perhaps a bit big. Poke it in at the side. big leaf but I think it'll look really cute when there's a few of them there, when there are a few of them there okay I'm gonna try and do the other side just the top I think that was the top I'll just fold that under be really careful with my fingers this is not a craft for two-year-olds but it is really fun and the roving is surprisingly cheap it's not it's not an expensive craft really and it is something that you can put down and come back to it's not like painting where you have to finish it all in one go or try and save as much resources as you can you can even like i've just got a whole pile of little odds and ends cutoffs that i can use like if i wanted to do a little red spot i can still use that so there's not a little, in fact, there's no waste <clears throat> with needle felting. And I love it for like Christmas decorations and gifts. And um, I wouldn't recommend it as something you would make toys out of because of all these little fibers that would come off 
potentially be a choking hazard. Um, and also, um, they can be, whatever you make can be quite delicate. And you wouldn't want someone to just rip it all apart. But something special, some kind of ornament. Now I've got that fuzzy bit that I want to sort of stick in there. Mm, this is not really turning out the way I was thinking it would. <laughs> kind of looks like a hat. I think I will twist that around a bit and then make a third one out the back, which was always the plan. Whoops, just poked myself. I could make that a bit flatter and firmer. It's sort of up to you really. How you want it to look and feel. They are big strawberry leaves. Oh my goodness. Let's just attach it and see what it looks like. Can always rip it off. wearing the leather gloves at this point but I'm just being careful just poking it to fuse the red and the green fibers together hmm. and then I can leave this bit unattached Yep, so it definitely needs another leaf out the back here. Okay, I've ditched the wooden holder. And the good news is my leaf is massive. Too big. So what I'm going to do is just chop this off. Snip. I can use that for something else. I can make another leaf or use it in another project. Yeah, that's a bit better. to attach it in fact I might even use some of this to sort of cover up that um, crevice oops That's a bit nicer. <laughs> it's not a very conventional shape for strawberry leaves, but it's still pretty cute. What I could do is like a stem. It kind of look like an acorn. If I wanted to do a stem, I could just do sort of the same um, principle as the leaf, but obviously it's going to be a lot thinner. Sort of keep folding, rolling it over. Sometimes if I've got um, felt on the board, like from a previous project, those colours can um, attach themselves to what I'm working on at the time. So just be aware of that. Because even the tiniest bit of colour will be noticeable. I'll see how it's attaching to the board. Still better than stabbing your fingers or your table. I don't know. I'm not sure about this stem. Maybe if it had a little swirl, it'd be a bit of a feature. I'll think about it. Um, I'm going to do a few little C's, I think, because I don't know, he looks a little bit plain, especially with those massive leaves. Oh my goodness. I could make my strawberry bigger just by adding more red. But I'm going to try and make the leaves a little bit smaller. Mm. 
your um, first attempt at needle felting might be a little bit more straightforward than this. <laughs> little helicopter strawberry. Got a tiny bit of yellow left over from a project. And I'm not sure I have any more. Oh no, here we go. Okay, tiny bits of yellow. Now, for my tiny seeds, you'll actually be surprised at how small of an amount you need. Kind of curl it up and then poke it in. Now that's not um, super firmly attached, but if you prod it for too long, it sort of gets lost in the red layer. So I think that's all I need. Probably gonna need half that amount of yellow roving. Roll it up. It's a little bit bigly. I could use white. I wonder what white would look like. Yeah, okay, so white's cute too, but maybe not as striking. Oops, just buried it. Hmm. Actually, they kind of look like pimples. I don't know about these seeds anymore. Anyway, you get the idea. Um, and you can make all sorts of things. Like I said, the styrofoam ball is um, pretty cool. What I did was before I did the needle felting, I poked a hole um, through the styrofoam ball with like a knitting needle or something and then threaded the jute twine through it so I could have a little hanger. Uh, with my snowman, he just has um, a bit of cotton because he's he is felt base, he's not styrofoam base, and so I just threaded the cotton through the base, and the scarf is knitted. It's not felt, but it's pretty cute. He's actually alpaca. Someone gave me an alpaca fleece a long time ago, um, so that's pretty cool. Not washed, but um, very rustic and authentic. And this is a little scene. That I made in a jar and the ones in the jar I use this one as an example see how the base is white because I've got I've got heat you've got heaps of white and that's sort of cheap and readily available and so I just made the um, base and then attached um, green to it and then I've done a really thick sturdy stem like we did with the green um, for the mushroom and then a white mushroom shape with red over the top and white dots a little baby one and I sort of put in some um, sort of fiber that's not um, firmly attached down there just to have that sort of wispy look and yeah so there's lots of things you can do um, and it's really fun and this one where's my little red robin here he is it was a bit tricky putting the little wire feet on he doesn't always stand up very well but he, he does pretty well in a Christmas tree and that tail is the same um, concept as the strawberry leaves and the Christmas pudding leaves and a little beak you would do the little beak as a little stem and then gently attach it around the edges and that's just a little strip of grey here's another Christmas decoration, just basic red, and then um, I just took a strip of white, much thinner than that, and um, poked it in a spiral. So yeah, there's something to try. Okay, little epilogue. I've had an idea. I'm just going to rip these leaves off and make it heaps smaller. 
and see if that looks better or whether it just looks like a weird carrot. I don't know. I just don't want to give up on this poor little strawberry. I'm going to attach it. And then try and form these into their own leaves, leaves, leaf shapes. This one at the back may need some help. But it's the back, so it's okay. Maybe if I chop off one of these, I can use that. And I can make a set of strawberries with all of my spare leaves. I know I said you really should wear those leather gloves and you really should because like I said I've made myself bleed several times um, but they just get in the way <laughs> here I'm actually just pushing the roving back into itself rather than into the strawberry Okay, I think it looks a bit more like a strawberry now. Because the leaves don't overhang quite so dramatically. And maybe all I need to do now is just fix some more seeds. And I might have a really cute little strawberry. Happy felting!